Hey guys, thanks for watching our channel. Uh, we appreciate it. My name's Cameron. I'm Becca. And we are the Married Miss Adventures family with our daughter Nina and our son Julian. Uh, so last week was really crazy. It was a train wreck. It was like probably one of the hardest weeks we've had, maybe the last two weeks we've had in almost all of our travel and some of the more like emotionally trying and mentally trying times that we've had to deal with on this channel. Uh, so I wasn't able to really put up video because some of it honestly is like sad and a bit more um, It'll probably be triggering as well. So it's probably gonna be like a forbidden episode I will put it together and probably like post it maybe a year or two from now just to like have but that yeah, was bad um, but We'll talk more about that uh, If you have been keeping up with the channel you saw that we posted a short about what we a little bit about what we were experiencing about the school we were hesitant to put nina in school just any school in general because she's been homeschooled for since she was able to start learning things basically yeah. so we really wanted her to get to an age where she could recall things like remember things throughout the day tell us back what happened yeah. talk about body autonomy um you know safe adults safe people that sort of thing we we tr tried to get her to that level first and even still we were kind of shaky definitely hesitant yes uh this specific school seemed a bit better in terms of they weren't doing like Thanksgiving activities and yeah, I don't know just a bunch of bullshit basically. It was a nature school and Had a lot of free play. They were supposed to be doing ceramics and gardening and beekeeping yeah. things like that And all her friends like this the thing that sold all us is all of Nina's friends were going to the school So if we wanted her to spend time with these friends, she would kind of have to go because yeah. it was like very, it was like limited. Like everyone's at school, then they're at jujitsu. So one of the big selling points was um, that kids were there. Socialization. Yes, because uh, we could not give her not the energy all. that her friends were giving her. And before this school happened, most of her friends were at home or homeschooled. So it just went from playing all day with all her friends to nothing. Yeah. And with a newborn at home, it was just, just it was tough. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we decided to try it. We were a bit hesitant also because of the people involved. The people involved, yeah. yeah. So like teachers, administration, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. What we had known about them was a little skeptical. How do yeah, I it was that? a little like, alarming. A little alarming, oh, yeah, yeah. Like just seemed like a little unstable, like financially and just kind of um, with other things. Reputations weren't like too good, but we kind of gave like the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that you have to watch out for when traveling uh, in these communities. It's just like giving people the benefit of the doubt. Do your research. Go slow in relationships. Like, don't feel like you have to accept someone, you know, too fast. It's honestly a red flag if people are just like, hey, 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 can we come over? Can we do this? And they're like, like, hey, it's okay to take your time with getting to know people. Yeah, and that was kind of happening with like, oh, when's Nina going to come to the school? Oh, when's Nina going to come to the school? When are you going to sign her up? And it was kind of like, why are you, like, pushing so hard? Um, and then, yeah, like, we just didn't know the admins super well we knew that some of them had experience with school but we didn't know you know how much like had they ever run a business before yeah. what was their experience we, we didn't do our due diligence basically and it was it's a brand yeah. new school so it's like brand. all of the people involved were new and we're new with even putting Nina in school so it was just like yeah. a test all, everybody was experimenting yeah. yeah i don't want to go too in depth like i want to do a specific video because things are still unraveling now if you saw the short you know a little bit about that uh money is still like an issue and then the issue with the kid you know children will be children we understand that but the way in which that the responsibility was you know taken like the school was trying to avoid responsibility avoid accountability and it just it just started snowballing parents started coming out like hey it just, it got bad. But what we'll say is, like, we want to kind of, that's a good segue into predatory practices in the expat community. Mm -hmm. You know, 
because when you are traveling in these communities, sometimes people will try to take advantage of you from you being new or, mm -hmm. you know, you maybe like are too generous or you really don't have your guard up. Like people right. take advantage of that sometimes. And just like in the ways I feel like they kind of target why you're even in the in the expat community in the first place. Like in Vietnam, a lot of people were. Uh, had left the states and come to Asia for like spiritual growth and trying to like heal trauma and all these things. So you would get these people that were like, "Oh yeah, I'm a guru. Um, pay me like two hundred dollars a week, and I will play my singing bowl and teach heal you yoga you. that right. I've never been certified for, and heal you and do therapy." And it's like this person literally just had their own like mental like breakthrough like a week ago mm -hmm. so like that sort of thing and especially here with mexico um in merida specifically it's a lot of families a lot of families trying to escape like you know kind of the westernized school system of like you're in a class from nine to five it right. looks like a jail you're on a bus that looks like a jail bus going to school so you see this beautiful like hacienda and there's a pool and there's nature and there's ceramics and, and the all parents this stuff. Are cool yeah, and, it and like very welcoming. Yes, and that. So it's like you're they can sometimes like look into vulnerable areas and mm -hmm. be like, Oh, this is a perfect way to, you know, right. capitalize. Like <laughs> like one of the things that happened like when we were traveling is we met people who were teaching about things that they weren't experienced in mm -hmm. but it appeared that they were you know they had the terminology they had the garb mm -hmm, and the garb but okay. then when you get down to it uh they're actually predators or they're like they might find like women who are oh hey like i can spiritually awaken you and you did it and they use all these terms but really what they're doing is is they're just like it's their hunt it's like they're hunting and you kind of got you got to be careful or not necessarily like they're looking for anything like sexual, but also sometimes it'll be financial. Like they'll just know like, oh, this person's doing the community and they'll be like, hey, can I borrow a hundred dollars? But they've already asked everyone else. So now when you put that together, they've already borrowed two thousand dollars from the community and they have no, you know, um, intention of paying it back. So it's like they'll be financial predators as well. Mm -hmm. um, and what I say is just be careful. Like just be mindful that if something doesn't feel right, it's not. It's typically not. Mm -hmm. And we had to learn the hard way. We had to get smacked in the head a few times before we were like, okay, how can we stop this from happening? What did we do that could have uh, that we that that stopped us from learning this lesson? Mm -hmm. And we didn't get hit that hard with school because we still were like, eh, but we shouldn't have trusted. Nina is our it's like our most valuable, um, like she's, she's it. So I should have never put her in the hands of someone and I take responsibility for that totally. You gotta be careful with mm -hmm. what you trust people with. It all seems good when you're in paradise, but also it's still mm -hmm. people are people. We learned a lot, like not even just from like being kind of roped into this sort of thing, we learned not only what to look for in a school, because this was our first time putting in a school, but what to look for with just finding your community. Um, oh, yeah, that's big. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. So, like, even if everything was fine with the school, I feel like the the price was kind of a red flag. Yes, the price was yeah. higher than, like, the normal schools. And you don't have – these the schools, you're paying 35 thousand thirty five hundred pesos and you're getting uniforms you're getting like like pencil containers with the school's logo on it. you're getting books you're getting all these things and we're paying five thousand pesos a month plus and it's materials like, plus, plus materials yeah stuff. and yeah. it's and we're not getting it doesn't have half of what it seems like as far as structure and our kids just literally playing all day if you want to have the kids play all day that's cool but that's not where it's Five thousand pesos to me yes. personally. Yes, we need some structure. <laughs> so yeah, that probably was like a little bit of a, a red flag, but. Um, well, as far as like the future um, for Nina in school, we're still gonna look for places, but right now the community is kind of like come together and we're also looking at like, okay, hey, are you going to the library? Can mm -hmm. you take the kids there? We'll do a class. Um, hey, what are you doing at your like 
home and it's like we're all kind of coming together because at one point during the school's meltdown the parents came to the meeting and we were like hey we'll teach we'll chip in we'll do something but they were still in this like phase of lying and hiding things and it was weird so we couldn't engage as a community uh, and that's another thing that happened like in this terrible situation we trauma bonded. <laughs> we trauma bonded, but it like brought all of us much closer. Like yeah, everyone sure. in the community. At first, I was scared. I was like, "Man, you know what? I'm not laying. This, I'm not laying down. I'm not gonna give into the peace and light and all this. I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to put this out and make sure that we know and we we learn from it and people are held accountable and then we move forward from it. But it felt more like a movement to avoid. And I, I kind of felt like discouraged, but then the community just kind of like, wait a minute, this doesn't seem right. And they started to kind of hold accountability and not let things go and not look past it. And I felt like that gave me so much more faith in the people around me. Mm-hmm. You know, at first it was very like, whose side are you on sort of thing? Because like the admins of the school basically like they Split. were having, yeah, they were having such disagreements about money and missing money and management of the school and all this stuff yeah and the parents were kind of left like in the middle like each side kind of tried to like gain their own support right and i think in the end most of the people in our community were just like this is all fucked up like we're not really trying to mess with any of y'all right now but we'll go more in detail about it like i want to do a specific video on this because you gotta understand how crazy this situation was. Like it, it was insane. I feel really good about the community. How do you feel about the community? I feel good. Yeah, I feel I feel very trauma bonded. Honestly, <laughs> I feel very close to them. Um, but no, I yeah. feel like it. Like it. Like trying times like this kind of show you your real relationship with other people. Exactly. I feel good about it. Relationships yeah. to me, they don't really mean anything until they're like tested. Tested, yeah. You know, like we can build, but I don't know until we hit the wall and you're like, bro, what are we going to do? And I'm, you looking scared. I'm looking scared. And we both like still moving forward, you know? So yeah. just the last little update. Our friend, uh, you know, let me see. Mm-hmm. So I am recently doing my um, doula training. Yeah, so I had basically found my first client through actually my midwife that delivered Julian. Um, She had somebody that needed help and needed some support, so I'm gaining experience by helping her out. And uh, her and her son needed a place to live and to stay for the birth, so we are now co-living with them. So we'll try to keep you posted on that. We'll link her YouTube channel below as well. So, and Julian's crawling. Julian's crawling, <laughs> yes. Julian's crawling. Julian's crawling. So we're happy yes. about that. Mm-hmm. We're, I mean, we're going to continue to, to film as usual and post. It just was like all this stuff ran. You know, I was filming and I was also dealing with all this stuff. And I was still kind of feeling weird in the community. So I didn't, we didn't post anything. So we're kind of getting back on track. This is like a hard reset. Um, but I thank you, everyone who's like watching our videos and supporting mm-hmm. and any parents who, because a few parents have reached out and said they put their kids in the school. You can always message us on Instagram if you just need someone to talk to, someone who's also in a similar situation. It really did help me uh, to talk to people. So just reach out if you need any support. Thanks for watching the video. Y'all have a nice day.